Good afternoon, class, or good evening, or whenever you happen to be watching this. So glad you're here. So glad to be doing some more math. So we only have one unit to go. We're just actually going to have a quiz on this unit, and that is it. And then after that, you're taking a final exam, and then we're finished. So we're going to spend a couple days working probability. Some of this you guys have done before. Some of this you haven't. All right? Now, with some of these, these words here are going to be brand new to you. So especially this idea of sample space, I don't think you've seen that before. So make sure that you code. So you should find this in your probability packet. It starts off like this. Your final exam is the first thing in that packet. So the final exam is all stapled together. Don't worry, it's not broken. Um, I don't know exactly where I stuck my final exam. Ah, here it is. So your final exam starts like this. This should be, at least for me, this was the beginning of my packet. Hang on to that, and we're going to use this later um, at the end of the year. You'll see it's 68 questions, and they're all multiple choice, although some of them you might have to select A and B. Um, and then you'll record your answer on this page right here, and then submit that. But this is we're going to put aside for now. Behind that, you should have this packet right here. And the first page should talk about experiment, outcome, and sample space. So we are talking about one of my favorite topics, probability. So the question is, what are the chances that we just got these specific dice rolls? Um, especially as somebody who likes playing games, I love trying to calculate probability. I also really like it because probability is really, really, really counterintuitive. It feels like, oh, this should be a really simple problem, but actually it's pretty tricky in many cases. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the, the vocabulary we're going to be working with here. First thing we're going to be doing in our time together, and in our time on Friday, we're actually going to run a couple of experiments. Um, we are going to do experiments and outcomes. So an experiment is just an investigation with various results. Or maybe a procedure. So this is the first thing that's a little bit different, right? If we were in science class, we'd go, okay, uh, you're going to use the scientific method. We're going to test that. In probability, I just did an experiment. And in my experiment, I got a 20. There are many possible events that we could have here. We could roll a 1 or a 20 or any number of other options. So for this one, we rolled a 1. Great. So example of this would be rolling a dice. A die or flipping a coin or pulling a marble from a bag something like that now an outcome is a possible result from an experiment So, what are our possible results? We could have heads, ooh, I just said H-E-D, or tails. Or we could have, if I rolled this six-sided die right here, well, let's get the four-sided die. The four-sided die is fun. You don't see that that often. So if I take this four-sided die, my outcomes would be one, two, three, four. Now, the sample space is something that's going to be a little bit different for you. What the sample space is, is when we're doing probability, we want to know what are all of the possible outcomes. So the mathematical term for this is actually the set of all possible outcomes. So what that is, is one outcome is just an outcome. All of the outcomes, and we write it as a set. So we use those brackets that we had before. So we could have heads, tails. That would be the sample space for a coin flip. And you're going to separate each of the outcomes with a comma and put them all in brackets. 
So for our die, that's our four-sided die, we're going to do it like that. Kind of nice. So let's look at a couple examples. So state begins with the letter O is chosen. So if I think about the sample space for states beginning with O, go ahead, pick it. Can you do it? All right, it's Ohio, Oregon, and Oklahoma. There are three possible outcomes. Let's say I wanted to know what's the probability my, if I was to have another kid, that my, their, their birthday would be on a Monday or Tuesday, or that any day of the week is chosen. To find the sample space for days of the week, we're going to have to do, well, okay, what are all the days of week? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And we're going to put those brackets around it to say that we have the sum excuse me, the set of those, and there are seven days in a week. Now, a measure, a probability is a measure of the chance of a specific event. And you're always going to write it in terms of P, E. So it's the probability of the event that you're looking at. This is going to be expressed as a ratio of the favorable outcomes to the total number of outcomes. This ratio can be written as a fraction, decimal, or a percent. And the sum of all probabilities in a sample space always is going to add together to 1. So let's go ahead and jump up here. If we go back up and look at this and we say, okay, what is the probability, assuming it's totally random, when a child is born, on what day of the week it is, what's the probability that they're born on Monday or Tuesday? So the way we'd write that is the probability of, well, let's just even just do Monday. Probability of Monday is going to equal... 1, which is our desired outcome, being born on a Monday, out of total, which is 7. And if we were to add up the probabilities of each of the days of the week, that would be 1 7th plus 1 7th plus 1 7th, and so on, until we add all of those fractions up to 1. All right, now, here's another example. Let's say we had a spinner. So I've been playing some board games with my kids. For some reason, kids' board games have tons of spinners in them, and I, I don't know why. So this is a spinner that's 1 through 16, and if it's spun once and it's fair, which usually they aren't fair, how could we write these? Well, the probability of getting a 9, that's only well, one of these 16, so that would be 1 16th. We'd also, we can write that also then not just as a fraction, but also as 0 0.0625, which is the decimal form of that. And then if we move that and multiply it by 100, it can also be written as 6.25%. Now, the sum of all probabilities in sample space equaling to 1, that, that's also 100% is another way to think about that. So you can't have more than 100% probability that something is going to happen. Now, at least a 12. So if we look here, including 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5... There are five possible uh, likely events, or excuse me, not likely events. There are five outcomes that we would consider favorable in this case. So we would go five out of 16, which is 0.3125, or 31.25 percent perfect squares Ooh, do we remember what a perfect square is so perfect square think about that we've got hmm, two times two is four 
What other perfect squares do we have? 3 times 3 is 9. 4 times 4 is 16. And then 1 times 1 is 1. So I think we'll, we'll count 1. Um, so that gives us 4 out of 16. And when you're writing these, we're going to want to reduce that down to 1 fourth. So always make sure you're reducing your fractions as you're going through this. All right, probability not shaded. And I, I figure you can figure out the rest of those relatively easy. 7 sixteenths, because there are 7 not shaded. All right, now 2 or 11. 2 or. Now that or is really important. Because if it's an and, we're going to see that in a little bit when we do more than one event. Um, and the difference between those two matters. In this case, 2 or 11 gives us 2 out of 16, which is 1 eighth. And then some multiple of 5. 5, 10, or 15, we're at 3 sixteenths. Okay, so those are all. You've done that before. Let's do a couple more of these. Um, if we look at this next page, and we flip over to the next page, we see, move that up a little bit, there we go. Month of the year was chosen at random. Okay, it starts with J, so you need to think about what is the sample space here? Okay, well, the sample space are things, months of the year. So, we would say the set includes January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. There's our sample space. Those are all the possible events that we have. Starting with J, one, two, three. So that's going to be three twelfths, giving us a one fourth chance, one fourth probability, or 0.25 or 25%. Starts with a T. Huh. I don't remember, maybe the month of Tiberius, maybe V month, but that's actually zero. So T is not in our set here. So the, the chance of that happening, the probability of that happening is zero. It has more than 30 days. I don't know, you can do that little trick, right? You, you guys know that one. One, two. All the big bumps are the ones that have 31, and then the little ones are, are the smaller ones. So um, if I do that, is that, now I'm, oh, at most 30 days. I'm sorry, I read that incorrectly. At most 30 days, um, that would be the lower ones, ooh, but not including February, that's five of the months. So five twelfths. All right, now, these are these are just kind of silly things, right? A letter from the word probability is chosen at random. Find the probability of getting these different pieces. All right, I think you guys can get these. I'm not going to go through each of these. Um, one thing that you will see in a lot of these problems has to do with decks of cards. So I just want to remind you that for a deck of cards, there are 52 cards in a deck. You don't count the jokers. So often they'll use probability cards. Why? Well, because the people who use prob probability was actually invented by gamblers, not by mathematicians. And they invented it in order to be able to try and make money off of games of dice and games of cards. Uh, so you'll see these are a common example of like oh, rolling a die, what happens with it, which is just super, super fun. It's like these are people who are just gamblers, like loafers, trying to make money. And instead, we get this really kind of crazy, awesome event. Or, excuse me, like mathematical way to do things. Now, let's, uh, let's talk about the complement. Because this is another one I don't think you've seen this before. So the complement of the event is the probability of an event not occurring. So since the sum of all the probabilities in the sample space is the probability, um, since the sum of all probabilities in the sample space is one, the probability of an event not occurring is 
1 minus the probability of the event occurring. So this little tilde here means not event. So this is the probability of the event not occurring. So if we take 1 minus the probability of it occurring, we can find the complement of the event. This is not like, oh, event, you're so handsome. This is what's the likelihood that this event is not going to happen. So this is really helpful when thinking about things like the weather. So the first question, I love it. It says probability it will rain tomorrow is three eighths. What's the probability that it will not rain? So if we look at this, three eighths is, so to find the complement, we're gonna take one minus three eighths, which is gonna give us five eighths. And then when we write these, we're gonna write them as both the fractions and as their decimals. So I love this because this is why, you know, it's really easy to get angry at the weather and say like, oh, it says there's a 38 chance of rain and it didn't rain today. Or there was a 60% chance of it raining and it didn't rain. Well, 60% chance of it raining is like rolling this 10 sided die right here and it coming up. So here's our, here's our 10 sided die. Let's say there's a 60% chance of rain. We're gonna we're gonna just put that as one through six. And that means there's a forty percent chance it's not gonna rain. So if we roll this die, we're not surprised if if this is supposed to be one through six and this is seven through ten. We're not ex we know we're not surprised like oh okay well I'm I'm I rolled something where I'm, I'm not raining. Now, in, in the weather, it's actually even more interesting than that, because what that number actually means is that they've run a simulation in the computer, and in they've run thousands of simulations, and in 40% of those, it doesn't rain, and in 60% of those, it does rain. Now, the mathematics of weather prediction is just fascinating. All right, let's look at a couple others of these. So the probability that someone will win a game at the carnival is a 1 in 24. What's the probability they're not going to win? Well, we're going to take 1 minus 1 in 24, which is going to give us 23 in 24. And if you write that as a percent, that's going to be 95.83% or 0.9583. I wouldn't play that carnival game. Actually, as carnival games go, that's probably pretty good chances. All right, so to find the complement, we're going to subtract 1 minus the probability of the event occurring. And the complement is the probability the event is not happening. All right, your homework for today. So there is a probability maze. This probability maze is extra credit. Turn it in with your homework, and uh, you'll get extra credit. I'm not going to post it. This is like the secret Easter egg to say like, you watch the video, you can do the maze and do some extra credit. If you don't watch the video, you won't know that this happened or if you skipped around ahead of the video. Now, your homework is a two page document. It says on the top here, unit nine, probability and statistics, homework one, simple probability. So go ahead and do this today on Thursday and we will, I'll post the answer to it um, and you can check that answer tomorrow. All right, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks.